this is probably the very last island you'd ever want to visit. When I think of islands, I usually think of beautiful beaches, coconuts, and like some shellfish. But this island right here, it's nothing to play with. The small island off the coast of Brazil is named Ilha da Camada Grande, or at least something like that because I could barely say English words. But most people just call it Snake Island. So if you're still wondering what's so special about this island, it's filled with snakes. Very dangerous snakes, might I add. So dangerous that the Brazilian government has made it illegal for anyone to visit if they don't have authorization. And even if I did have authorization, I would kindly decline the offer to go. What covers this island is one specific snake that can only be found on this island. This one, the Golden Lancehead Viper. And just like all other vipers, they're venomous. These snakes have been known to grow up to 1.16 meters, which is just about four feet long. They are highly venomous. And I mean like, there's no reason to mess with them at all. Other lancehead species are responsible for more deaths in South and North America than any other snake. More specifically, their cousin, the Fair Day Lance, which has been defined as the most dangerous snake in Central and South America. If you're bitten by this snake, you'll experience severe swelling, pain, nausea, vomiting, and there's about a 7 to 10% chance you won't make it. And there are reports out there that say the Golden Lancet's venom is five times as potent as his South American cousin, which would lead me to believe you'd be about five times less likely to survive their bite. But since there's no prey or other animals on this island, for obvious reasons, most of their diet comes from visiting birds. But the thing with birds is, you gotta catch them quick. Which means their venom has to work fast. Which is exactly what their venom has evolved to do. Work fast. Now back to the island. This island's about 110 acres, which isn't that big. For comparison, it's about the same size as 82 football fields. Which may be big for like an amusement park or something, but for an island, it's not that big. Disneyland in California is 500 acres, while Disney World in Florida is 25,000 acres. So like I said, this island is very small. Because very few people are authorized to visit this island, it's extremely difficult to estimate how many snakes are actually on this island. Some reports say that there are over 425,000 snakes on this one island, which to me is kind of hard to believe because they only eat birds. But let's just say that is true. That would mean that there is one snake per every square meter. So basically, every three steps, you're meeting a new snake. But I've also read that other researchers estimate there to be anywhere from 2,500 to 4,000 snakes on this island. Now let's just say you were at Disneyland the smaller one. And let's just say they announced that they're about to release 4,003 and a half foot vipers right on that establishment. Would you feel any sort of comfort being there? Probably not. Now just think, this place is almost five times smaller than Disneyland. And that's why I think Snake Island is the very last island that you'd want to visit. Maybe since that last island was so crazy, we should talk about a wholesome one. Ironically, this one's in Australia. This one's called Rotnest Island, and it's home to one of the cutest animals in the world. Well, at least in my opinion, the quokka is one of the cutest animals in the world. I know I said the island's name is Rotnest Island, but we're gonna call it Quokka Island because it's more fun. If you're not familiar with quokkas, they're marsupials, which means they're related to kangaroos and koalas. But, but don't get me started on koalas. I could go on for hours on how I feel about koalas. Quokkas don't grow to much taller than a foot and a half and weigh 10 to 11 pounds at most. So that means they're pretty small. And small mammals usually get eaten by bigger mammals. And it's no different for these ones. They are prey to cats, dogs, dingoes, foxes, and even a few birds. So life for this little guy can get rough. And this is where Quokka Island comes into play. This island is like a sanctuary for quokkas because they are the only native mammal to this island. With about 10 to 12,000 quokkas living on this island, 
they can roam freely. With social media growing in the last few years, this has become a hot spot for tourists in Australia. Even with the boost of human interaction and development, it seems as though the quokkas are still thriving on this island. People come from all over the world to take selfies with quokkas, which seems obnoxious, but it's actually kind of wholesome. But before we get off the topic of quokkas, I'd like to talk about the mother's not so motherly instincts. When threatened by predators like dingoes, a mother quokka will eject its baby out of its pouch and scramble away. And I know that sounds bad, but it's actually, it's actually just bad. They usually have control over their pouch muscles, but when they feel threatened, they release their muscles and let the joey kind of take the fall for it. Now, I usually try to end with some kind of positive moral to the story, but this time, we're just leaving it at that. As always, guys, peace and love, baby.